Hello, my name is Ian McCall and this is a video from the Dermoscopy Med Simple series on seborrheic keratosis. Now, they're extremely common uh, keratinocytic tumours and they probably give the inexperienced uh, person the most trouble, especially if they're flat, in distinguishing uh, seborrheic keratosis from a uh, potential malignant melanoma. Now remember that if a seborrheic keratosis is irritated, it can also look like a squamous cell carcinoma. Dermatoscopically, you'll see white and brown clods, also some orange clods, and you'll get brown and even black uh, structureless areas and looped vessels. Looped vessels are the sort of vessels you usually see in a seborrheic Now, non kittenlerian terminology uh, describes a variety of other things called fingerprinting, brain-like structures, moth-eaten borders, and hairpin vessels. And uh, cervicates are associated with crypts, fissures, and milia. I have to admit that some of these terms have a seductive attraction for me with, uh, with some of these lesions, because they do describe what you're seeing so very well. But we'll try and stick to Kittlerian terminology. So let's look at this seborrheic keratosis here. What have we got? We've got brown, white, and orange clods. You've got some white clods here, some orangey ones here, some browny black ones here. And this collection together makes up the archetypical seborrheic keratosis. But note that seborrheic keratosis can also have lined reticula, particularly the reticulate variant of a seborrheic keratosis. It can have lines curved, especially when it's evolving from a solar lentigo, so often they're quite flat this time. And you can have brown or orange circles in some set case. And basically, any clot color, other than perhaps red and purple and blue. And as far as structureless areas go, they can be black, blue, blue-gray, yellow, white or orange. So. There's a large variety of uh, ways in which seborrheic keratosis can mimic other lesions, especially melanocytic ones. Let's have a look at some of the others in this particular series. Okay, there's this lesion on the outer aspect of this man's arm. Now, a plastic surgeon was going to cut that off, um, but this was the picture. You've got some brown clods and you've got some brown circles. And of course, this is all seborrheic keratosis. It can be likely frozen or shaved off. We managed to avert the plastic surgeon doing that. We've talked of uh, brown clots. Here's some others. <coughs> but these are distributed, varying sizes, distributed throughout this lesion. And this can bear a superficial resemblance to a brown clod type of uh, melanoma. Um, here's the clinical lesion, the most unusual arrow-shaped lesion uh, that the patient had. So you've just got to watch with uh, brown clods distributed through a lesion like this um, that it's not a melanocytic lesion. You'd have a good look around to see if there was any lines reticular. But as I said, you can even get a bit of lines reticular in some seborrheic keratosis. So what about this lesion? <laughs> now, I don't know quite how to describe this best. Um, I really think the uh, terminology of a brain-like pattern, you know, a section, a cross-section of the, of the brain, so describes what you're seeing when you look at this uh, dermatoscopic picture of a seborrheic keratosis. I suppose they are packed brown clods, but um, these aren't quite white lines between them. Uh, but it's not a congenital nevus. You know, usually our packed clods are congenital nevi, but they usually don't have these white lines in between or spaces, I might say. This was the clinical. So brain-like pattern there for some seborrheic keratosis. Now what about this one? <coughs> this was a lesion on the back. Difficult to say there. Could easily be uh, a melanocytic lesion. But there were lines curved here. And usually, as I say, they're associated with solar lentigo. And some seborrheic keratosis seem to evolve from that. Let's look at this just uh, a little bit enlarged. Okay, let's see if we can see this one here. 
you know, I was pointing to some of these being lines curved, and there are lines curved here, and the overall picture is more lines curved. There's a little bit there you might say that's lines retic, but the majority of what we're seeing there are lines curved. So either a solar lentigo or a flat seborrheic keratosis. And it can sometimes be very difficult to uh, distinguish between the two. What other ones do we have here? Ah, this one. Vessels. We said that the main vessels that you'll see in seborrheic keratosis are looped vessels. It used to be called hairpin vessels, but looped vessels. And they're wrapped in this keratin sheath. This is what this white sheath is uh, around them. It's keratin around the blood vessels. And this is a very useful sign uh, in distinguishing a keratocytic lesion from a melanocytic lesion. You really won't get this uh, keratin around the vessels in a melanocytic lesion. Um, let's make this just a touch bigger. So here we've got some looped vessels here. Admittedly in this there's a, a sort of slight mixture, but the majority are in fact looped vessels that you're in fact seeing here. And they're wrapped in a keratin sheath. And this is a picture that you'll see in some very pale types of, uh, of seborrheic keratosis. Some irritated ones as well. But let's talk of irritated ones. Ah, but yeah, let's look at this one. <coughs> here was a lesion here, pinkish. A um, couple of bits of keratin sticking out of uh, presumably follicles here. Uh, I think this is a little bit of, uh, of hemorrhage that we're seeing into the lesion. If you look at the dermoscopy, these are these areas of hemorrhage here presenting as black clots. You've got some looped vessels there. You've got some white clots within the uh, lesion as well. So this is the picture that you'll sometimes see in an irritated separate keratosis. You know, the keratin around them isn't so obvious in, uh, in this one as it was in the, in the last. Now, as well as uh, having uh, an irritated seborrheic keratosis, sometimes you'll in fact have uh, regression within a seborrheic keratosis. Look at this one here, two parts, but this part here is really quite dark. So you'd look carefully uh, at it. Now here, you have your brown clods of a set K, um, but here you've got grey and black clods, and there's some little dots here as well. But this is all part of regression occurring within that part of the seborrheic keratosis. So regression can occur within seb -Ks, and you've got to be careful with your interpretation of that as well. This is another seborrheic keratosis, very, very dark. The clinical actually you can see small follicular openings on the surface of it. Um, but if you look at the dermoscopy, you might look at that edge and say, oh, these are uh, lines lateral peripheral. And you've got this blue-gray structure here, but um, it's actually blue-white structureless in a thick seborrheic keratosis. Um, you've got both thickening uh, and hyperkeratosis there, as well as a thick layer of pigment within this, giving you these blue-gray or blue-white structureless areas. But you've got an orange clod up here. You've got some brown clods in this area as well. So. These are the features that help to tell you this is a uh, thick seborrheic keratosis. Remember, blue white structureless areas can be seen in melanoma, uh, blue nevus, some BCCs, and thick sep -Ks. And let's finish up with uh, this lesion here. This is a clinical. You've, in fact, got two seborrheic uh, keratosis here showing different features. Black structureless and some lines curved. I'll enlarge this just in a sec to let you see it. Some white clods though uh, in this one. This is background lines reticular. In other words, this is sun damaged skin on the back and you're just seeing the background lines reticular here of this person's uh, back. Let's just make it a little bit bigger. One touch more I think. <coughs> there we go. So I think I said these were some of the lines curved 
that were just near this uh, this lesion rather than lines retake. Um, there's a mixture though, isn't there? And up here, the more typical features of your, your white clods, there's your background lines reticular. But this is the starry sky, they sometimes speak about some brown clods in here as well. So, seborrheic keratosis. They really can look quite uh, worrisome uh, at times. But they are a keratinocytic tumour. They can mimic melanocytic lesions. <laughs> they can mimic in the irritated form um, squamous cell skin cancer. And it can be very difficult to uh, separate them out. So remember the main structures within them. White, brown and orange clods. Brown or even black structureless areas. Some blue-gray structureless areas and looped vessels. Um, and these are the non cutlerian terminology that, as I say, have a seduct uh, seductive attraction to me for s in describing some of these. So, seborrheic keratosis. Look at as many as you can with a dermatoscope. You'd be intrigued as to how the, the dermatoscopic picture will vary quite considerably, um, whereas the clinical picture can look very similar. So put your dermatoscope on them and you'll learn a lot about the variation in the dermatoscopic appearances of seborrheic keratosis. Thank you very much.